If you've been following the videos on this channel, you may recall a while ago I did a video about a vertical turntable. It was one where I had to replace the belt in it, and it was a brand new old stock, interesting device. However, somebody way, decided okay. to bring out a new vertical turntable, put it on Kickstarter about a year or so ago, and I decided to uh, put some money in and go ahead and get one. Not too sure why at the time, but anyway, it's turned up here now, so let's have a look at it. Now, the box on this is very professional. You can get one of these now online. You don't have to get it through the Kickstarter start a campaign and it looks like a proper thing that you'd buy in a shop inside the box you get a nice instruction card at the top telling you what to do first so you don't break anything very well packaged as well it needs to be because the thing itself is a strange shape but mine made it internationally to the uk without getting damaged and i've got a uk plug here as well as a euro plug the power adapter is multi-voltage it runs from 100 to 240 volts and it's just got the standard figure of eight lead that plugs into there now going through the other things, we'll just look in the instruction manual here, see what we have to do to put this together. It's pretty simple, but you want to do things in the right order, of course. First thing, take some tape off the cartridge cover here. And then there were a couple of elastic bands. There was one holding the arm to the center part, and then there's another one that I've got to take off on the bottom here. That's just to hold everything in place while it's in transit. Of course, you won't need those again. Now, the next thing wasn't mentioned in the instructions, but it's peel off the protective cover on the platter. Now, it's obvious, but I can imagine maybe a couple of people leaving that on there without realising. But anyway, take that off there, put that on the centre part, spins around freely, so we can remove the centre part of that and put on the slip mat. There's two different slip mats inside the box. I'll show you the other design later on. And of course, they're both double-sided, I think, as well. Now the next thing we need to do is put the belt on, the drive belt, and there are two of these inside the box, so just put it around the wheel at the bottom there, and then feed it around the platter at the top here. Now, I had a turntable in the past with a belt like this on, and it kept falling off all the time. Unlikely to on this one, because it's got a lip on the front of there. You can see the belt pushes against there and holds itself in place. Now around the back of the turntable, we've got to plug that 12 volt power supply into there. Now, just looking around the front for a second, we can see that the device has stereo speakers built into it. And it's in a nice solid wood case with a veneer on it. On the bottom, we can see a port for the speaker there. And it's got these rubber dampening feet at either corner, big chunky feet on there. Now, on the back, we could send the sound out of this to an external amplifier. It's got a built-in preamp. Uh, and if you were to send it out and you didn't want to use the internal speakers as well as your external ones, press that mute button in there. You can see there was a headphone socket on there as well. Right, well, let's put a record on here. You can see the center part has got velvet in there or something like that to stop it scratching your record. We'll just put this on here. Excuse the fingers, but I'm doing this at a bit of a strange angle to keep the camera in the right place. So tighten that, not too tight. Turn the volume switch, which is also the on-off switch up, and it starts spinning around. Take the arm out of the clip that holds it in place and just put it down like you would with a normal arm on a manual turntable and there you go now the sound quality from those built-in speakers is fine it's decent it's all right it's not very bassy though and the thing with that is of course you can't have too many vibrations built into the turntable because it would knock the stylus all over the place so i can understand why they've done that this has got a magnetic cover on there by the way as well but yeah you might want to send the sound off to external speakers they sound okay though on the internal ones good enough but i prefer a little bit more body with my sound now i'll just show you the different included slip mats of course you can swap them out for one of your own but i'll flip that over onto the other side which you can see is white and then we've got this black one which has a logo on one side or you can flip that over and just have a plain black one now if you want to swap between 33 and 45 just turn the thing off move the belt onto the next notch along and then turn it back on again. Now notice it takes a little bit of time to get up to speed here. That's because it sort of slips to start with a bit like a train setting off from a station. But once it gets up to speed, you can see it's moving fine there. There are two main reasons why you might want a vertical turntable. One is it takes up a lot less space on a shelf than a conventional turntable. And the second is that it looks really impressive when it's playing music. So let's take a look.
one slight side effect of the turntable being vertical is that the weight on the end of the arm wants to pull the arm a little bit towards the center of the record so you can see sometimes when you put it on at the beginning here it'll jump like that just across the intro to the record doesn't always happen but it happens a few times with me sometimes you just get lucky and it goes on right just like that but because the weight's on there and it wants to pull it a little bit normally you'd have an anti-skating mechanism and you'd make sure the arm went back in exactly the same position but as you can hear here it just jumps along a little bit every time i pick it up and put it down again Now, I'm sure there's quite a few people out there that will be interested to see how much tracking force is exerted on the record by this stylus being in an unusual position. So I've got this little five gram weight here, put it on these scales. It shows us 5.01, so we know it's pretty accurate. So to try and measure this, I'm taping those scales to the platter here, as you can see, and then I'll take the cover off the cartridge, turn the scales on and lower the stylus onto the center of those scales. And it starts off at 0.03, so I'll take that off at the end. Uh, shows us 2.64, so we'll say 2.61 or just 2.6 to round it down. So 2.6 grams tracking force. Now let's look at the cartridge manufacturer's specs. So the cartridge itself is the AT95E. If we look down the middle here, we can see they recommend a tracking force of one and a half to two and a half grams. So it's 2.6, just a little bit beyond there. We can't be too sure that my scale's uh, registering this perfectly, but I think it's pretty much within uh, tolerances there. So I would suggest that this stylus isn't going to damage your records, um, but it's not particularly lightweight on them either. I really think Grammavox have got to be congratulated on this one. It's so rare for a campaign on Kickstarter to get funded, but then come out approximately when they said it was, functioning and looking exactly the way they said it would do in the original campaign video. In fact, it's almost unheard of. Now, if you want to buy a Grammavox vertical turntable now, well, you don't have to go now, through... I'm not going to say this is the best turntable in the world. It's not going to replace a top-of-the-range deck, but for a second turntable, for a second room, it's about a thousand times better than that certain manufacturer that makes those ones that fit inside a briefcase that's selling high street clothing stores. You know who I mean. But anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.